friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm in one of my favorite places ever, just outside. And I have a word of encouragement for somebody. I just felt like I, need, I needed to share this. This is always a go-to word of encouragement of mine that I share with others, but just felt like God pressing me to share it. I really hope you can hear me. I wanted to get away from all the car noises. Uh, then I went here and realized you can hear all the airplanes instead. But I hope you can also hear the birds chirping and the wind blowing. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for just the beauty and your glory just all around us. Lord, thank you for this word of encouragement. I pray that you just give it to whoever needs to hear this, God. Please give me the words to speak. We thank you, Lord, for just how wonderful and loving you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This word is for everyone who's been feeling a little bit left out by god a little bit maybe forsaken i use that word lightly but forsaken forgotten the memes where it's like god it's me again and it's like the person bowing on their knees just feeling like everyone is getting their blessings except for you and i struggled with this and right now like i'm kind of like slipping into that a little bit I'm gonna be so real with you just like seeing all my friends get engaged and married and like buy new homes and just like career milestones and life milestones and I'm just here like God when is it my turn <laughs> according to my timeline I should be married in a couple years and I still don't even have a talking phase God the timeline's not timelining but I have to remember that God's plan is infinitely better than my plan and this is just a word of encouragement for someone who needs it. Today, one of our main scriptures is going to be Psalm 37. I would definitely read the whole Psalm on your own time. Chapter 37. Do not get upset because of evildoers. Do not be envious of wrongdoers, for they will wither quickly like the grass and decay like the green plants. Trust in the Lord and do good live in the land and cultivate faithfulness delight yourself in the lord and he will give you the desires of your heart amen commit your way to the lord trust also in him and he will do it he will bring out your righteousness as the light and your judgment as the noonday rest in the lord and wait patiently for him do not get upset because the one who is successful in his way because of the person who carries out wicked schemes seized from anger and abandoned wrath do not get upset it only leads to evil doing for evil doers will be eliminated but those who wait on the lord they will inherit the land yet a little while and the wicked person will be no more and you will look carefully for his place and he will not be there but the humble will inherit the land and will delight themselves in abundant prosperity amen I don't know about what you're going through, but I think a lot of us, we feel kind of like everyone else is getting blessed. And in the age of social media, it's so easy to see everyone's highlight reel and compare it to your lows. It's so easy to do that. And you know what they say, comparison is the thief of joy, but it's easier said than done. Just like, don't compare yourself. Lately, I've been seeing a lot of my friends just like be blessed with all the things that I really want. And to me, it's like, it feels unfair almost, but God gave me this illustration, if you will, of a parent who is steaming veggies for their baby and the baby really loves vegetables. And you guys know that vegetables are healthy for you. And let's say veggies are the blessing, whatever you are waiting on God for. But no good parent, no good parent would ever give their child steamed broccoli or carrots or whatever straight off the stove no good parent would do that because the broccoli the blessing it would burn their child no matter how much the child the baby is crying for the broccoli for the carrot for the brussels sprout <laughs> i don't know insert your blessing here no matter how much the baby is crying out to their parent for that no good parent would give them a boiling hot vegetable trust me the parent wants to give their baby the food more than anything but it's just not the right time yet it needs to cool down first before they give it to the baby or else it would burn so in the same way if god wants to bless me with financial prosperity but i am reckless with my money i spend all my money 
on clothes and shoes and things I don't need and I'm not a good steward of my money, the second God gives me all the money he wants to give me, I'm just gonna blow it. I'm gonna blow it. And can you contrast that with if I am being faithful with the little money that I have and I'm stewarding it well, God's gonna wanna give me more and he will trust that I have the character to handle it. If I cannot handle the blessing and God gives it to me, I might, I don't even know, I might be like enslaved to debt because I didn't know how to budget, because I didn't know how to this and that. I just use money as an easy example because I think we all like can understand like, yeah, someone who doesn't know how to budget their money and is reckless with their money, if you give them a lot, you probably can't trust them with the money. For you, for me, maybe it's something else like you really want a relationship you're waiting on God for your husband, for your wife, but you lack empathy, you don't have enough patience, how is God gonna bless you with your person? You will probably scare them away. I want to challenge your thinking that maybe God wants to give you blessings more than you want to receive them. Can I say that again? Maybe God wants to bless you more than you want to receive the blessing. But because he is a good father, amen, he knows when it is the best time to give us the steamed veggies. He's not gonna, oh my poor child, he's so hungry, she's so hungry, I'm just gonna give it to him, give it to her. No, that blessing will be a burn. God also reminded me of the stories of David and Joseph. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, Samuel is looking for Israel's next king. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of God came powerfully upon David. Suddenly, 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 God changed the trajectory of David's life but we know this was not instantly. Samuel anointed David so much earlier before David actually became king. You know, David actually had to wait 15 years for God's promise to come to pass. It was a sudden promise for sure. Maybe God suddenly promised you like um, you had a prophecy or you had a dream or you had something that God promised you. He's gonna give you the best husband. He's gonna give you um, breakthrough he's gonna provide for you financially maybe God promised you that suddenly but you don't see it yet trust David had to wait 15 years for God's promise to come to pass it was a sudden promise but it was not instant there's a difference here so there is a strategy in God's delay God was developing David's character let God set the pace surrender to his timing just like want to challenge you to hold on to God's promise to you because God's word never comes back void and also I'm reminded of Joseph who had these dreams that his brothers and his his dad his parents they would all bow down to him right and then next thing you know he sold into slavery he is accused for something he does he didn't do goes to jail and then finally it seems like God sent the right people to help him leave jail when there's two people who have dreams that they cannot interpret and Joseph's like, I can interpret them for you because dreams are from God. So he does that for them and um, exactly what he says comes to pass, but they forget their end of the deal and they, for, they forsake him in prison for two more years. God really <laughs> worked through Joseph and Joseph waited a whole like 17 17 plus years for his promise to come to pass for his dream to come into fulfillment i don't know about you but that's so crazy and yet joseph still had trust in god he still had hope and that just like really encourages me and challenges me to still have hope in god even if it would be the stupid thing to do even to like look at your circumstances and you know what god's still good God still got me. I dare you to have faith and hope when it feels stupid, when it feels like there's no way, there's no way. Because what does Romans 8 28 say? He's working all things for your good and for his glory, amen. Even all the bad situations, even all the delay, even all of this, 
Maybe it's just God is trying to develop your character. If Joseph's dream had come true the second he had the dreams, can you imagine his ego? I don't think a 15, 16, 17 year old boy <laughs> could handle that. That would just go up to his head. The ego would be crazy. But no, Joseph's one of our heroes because of what he endured and because of his humility and character. We just look to Joseph like, wow, he is such a man of God. He is so patient. He is so forgiving. Can you imagine forgiving your brothers who sold you into slavery? Because I cannot. I cannot personally imagine myself doing that. But that's, that's the kind of work God was doing in Joseph. God promises us in Jeremiah 29 11 that he has plans for us to give us hope in a future plans to prosper us and not to harm us. God's plan for you may not make sense and you may feel like you've been abandoned by God, but he's working behind the scenes. He's working them all around for your good and for his glory. God never forgets his plan and he never forgets you. The changes that you go through and the waiting that you endure, it may feel so uncomfortable and unfair even, but they are necessary for you to get to where God wants you to be. And I think we could all use a little bit more humility and admit that, oh yeah, maybe my character's not quite where it should be for me to receive the blessing that I'm waiting on God for. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Psalm 37, four. But those who wait for the Lord, they will inherit the land. The humble will inherit the land and will delight themselves in abundant prosperity. Do not be jealous of evildoers who seem to be blessed. Those blessings will all wither away, but my inheritance in the Lord will last forever. I need only delight in the Lord and he will transform my heart and give me the desires of my heart. And man, I was just reminded, um, you may be jealous of other people, um, non-Christians even, for how happy and how fulfilled and how this and that they seem but I want to challenge your thinking because do they really do they really have it all? Sure like their social media might seem like they have it all together and they have everything that you want but I can assure you that they don't. They don't have the peace in their heart that surpasses understanding because only the Lord our God can give us that. Sure they might have like all the all the riches and the fame and all of that in this life but your name is written in the book of life these friends might be going to the club every other day and all these parties and all of that but they're trying to fill this hole in their heart because that's with drugs with alcohol with partying with sex money anything they can just like they're trying to fill this hole in their heart but it will never satisfy that's why billionaires they have so much money and they still want more money why because they're they made money their god they're trying to fill that god-sized hole in their heart with money but money can't fill that hole because it's our soul longing for our creator we are made that way that's why people who seem to have it all they have so much in abundance in excess and they're still depressed. They're still hopeless. They still have anxiety. You we see all the celebrities that they seem to have everything. They have all the money, they have all the fame and status, um, any significant other that they could possibly want, they have it all. And yet there's so many that still struggle with depression and mental health issues. They may seem to have it all, but they don't. And I don't know about you, but I'd rather have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. I'd rather have my name written in the book of life. I'd rather just have the joy of the Lord and hear good job, good and faithful servant than to have everything that I would want on this earth, which will wither away. Do not get upset because of evildoers. Do not be envious of wrongdoers for they will wither quickly like the grass. The grass withers, the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. I don't really know how else to say it, but I hope that this was a blessing to whoever needed to hear it. God has not forsaken you. He has not forgotten you. 
yes, he may have gave you a promise and you're, you may still be waiting on it. Maybe it's been a year. Maybe it's been five years, 10 years, 15 even. But God's character, he's not one to forget about his promises. There are so many people, you just read Hebrews 11 for me. There's so many people that had faith in God and they waited a long time. And God, God's not mad that he should lie. I hope that my heart is being um, understood, but I want to leave us off with this poem. It's called Footprints in the Sand or just simply Footprints. One night a man had a dream. He dreamed he was walking along the beach with the Lord. Across the sky flashed scenes from his life. For each scene he noticed two sets of footprints in the sand. One belonged to him and the other to the Lord. When the last scene of his life flashed before him, he looked back at the footprints in the sand. He noticed that many times along the path of his life, there were only one set of footprints. He also noticed that it happened at the very lowest and saddest times in his life. This really bothered him and he questioned the Lord about it. Lord, you said that once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way. But I have noticed that during the most troublesome times in my life, there's only one set of footprints. I don't understand why. When I needed you the most, you would leave me. The Lord replied, My precious, precious child, I love you, and I would never leave you. During your times of trial and suffering, when you could only see one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. That's beautiful. Yeah, the Lord has not forsaken you. Maybe, maybe you're just not ready for the steamed broccoli yet. Maybe it's still too hot and the blessing would be a burn. God is a good father and he won't give you a blessing if it's gonna harm you. He wants to give it to you, trust me. He wants to, but maybe you're just not ready for it. And that may hurt to hear, like, ooh. Yeah, you know what? Maybe I, my character really isn't ready yet. I need to work on this patience. I need to be a better steward with my uh, finances. I need to be better at this. Those are some steps you can take right now. I want to invite you to a time of self-reflection. What is it that you're really, really, really waiting on God for? And what is something you could maybe work on a little bit more? With that, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this illustration that you've given me and all of these um, heroes of the faith in the hall of fame if you will that just really encourage us to keep waiting on you keep trusting in you god i know there's so 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 many other scriptures out there too that if we just wait on you god you will pull through for us and i know that you will do it you just have a resume of goodness and faithfulness god and i know if you would come through for abraham you'd come through for me god Please help us to work on whatever we need to work on and to develop our character. Help us to have joy in the trials and tribulations, God. Help us to have patience in the waiting, God. We just want to surrender everything at your feet. We want to keep trusting you and know that your timing is best. Thank you, God, for being a good father. You don't want to burn us. You want to bless us, God. Thank you for just who you are. You are so faithful and good and true. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. As always, remember to stay humble and be kind, and God really loves you. Love you too. Bye.